All right, here we go with lecture 3.6 in our cognition series. So this is our sixth in module three on attention. Uh, this will be the first of two lectures on the neuropsychology of attention. This first lecture will focus on a condition known as hemispatial neglect, and we'll also talk about another condition known as simultagnosia. Uh, in the final portion of this lecture, we'll talk about Posner's attentional networks, um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and then we'll also look at some population differences in attention and um, some treatments for attention and how drugs affect attention. So, without further ado, we're going to start off by talking about hemispatial neglect. This is a neurological disorder in which a patient does not attend to anything on one side. Usually it's their left side. This is usually due to a stroke in the right inferior parietal lobule in the uh, right hemisphere. So, um, you want to think carefully about uh, how this particular disorder affects uh, attention and also what it says about the attentional networks in the brain. So this is all going to tie together uh, as uh, this comes together. Now when we talk about uh, this disorder, they do not attend to anything on one side, and by that we usually mean literally anything. So this is a clock drawn by a patient with left hemispatial neglect. Now they're drawing this clock from memory. They're not drawing it, uh, they're not copying a drawing like we would have seen in agnosia. So you can see even in their memory or their ability to think about a clock, they've left off the left-hand side. Now obviously they've drawn a circle, but that's just an automatic thing. Uh, when they go to actually create the clock, you can see it's missing part of the left-hand side. Uh, these are other line drawings uh, by a uh, hemispatial neglect patient. You can see, uh, once again, they've left off um, significant portions of the left-hand side. And this is a line bisection task. Now, the task here is to draw a line down the middle of the um, line. So we're supposed to bisect the line. Sorry, kind of lost my focus there for a second. Uh, so it's supposed to be about here in the middle. What you can see, oops, let me go backwards. Um, what you can see is because this left-hand part over here doesn't exist, they've bisected the line over here as if the line ends at about this point. Uh, so they're not actually uh, cutting it down the middle, they're cutting it down the middle of what they actually pay attention to. So it shows that shift to the right, ignoring the left. This is a line cancellation task and shows a similar pattern. They're only canceling out those lines on the right-hand side and not paying any attention to those on the left-hand side. Uh, do you want to talk about how this is clearly an attention task um, because it extends to all sorts of other areas and we'll talk more about this in a moment but um, they do not attend to the left hand side of their plate they don't put makeup on the left side of their face they don't shave the left side of their face um, all sorts of um, interesting phenomenon so most neglect patients have damage to the right parietal lobe this is often called parietal neglect or um, hemi uh, hemispatial neglect, uh, hemispheric neglect, there are a bunch of different names for it. But they're essentially neglecting the left-hand side. That's why it's called neglect, because um, they just don't pay attention to it. It's still there, it's all that information is still available, they just simply are neglecting it. And again, this is an area of the parietal lobe called the inferior parietal lobule that is most, most often involved. So this is a left inferior parietal lobule, but just flip it over to the other side. And this is the area we're talking about. This is, of course, part of the dorsal stream, which is part of the wear pathway, which we've talked about a little bit already. So this uh, inferior parietal lobule is about right here. Um, some people have proposed there being a third stream, but really it seems to be part of this dorsal visual stream that we've talked about, which is involved in um, knowing where things are, part of the where pathway. So the first thing to talk about is neglect is not a perceptual phenomenon. This isn't agnosia. This isn't um, an inability to see things or see objects. We'll talk about simultagnosia in a moment, uh, which is another attentional disorder. Um, but the biggest thing we see is that neglect has an impact across all modalities. Um, so it's their uh, visual system, auditory system, their um, somatosensory, 
uh, systems, all of it gets ignored. Uh, in fact, neglect patients even ignore part of their bodies. You can take their left hand and put it on top of the right hand, and they'll tell you it's somebody else's hand. Um, and the man who mistook his wife for a hat, Al Oliver Sacks talks about a patient with hemispatient neglect uh, in which the patient wakes up in the hospital, believes that the staff has played a trick on him, and that uh, they have pl placed a severed human leg in bed with him. And so he grabs a hold of the leg to throw it out of the bed. Of course, it's his leg, and he throws himself out of bed. Um, what's interesting about neglect patients is they can still walk, because walking doesn't require attentional resources. Um, and you can actually get them to automatically attend to things on their left-hand side. So a loud, startling noise to the left will automatically capture their attention, um, which is pretty remarkable. So they have no normal motor coordination. I believe with some neglect patients, if you throw something at them on the left side, they can catch it. Um, and as I said, they can be directed towards something on the neglected side. And I know um, some treatments for neglect include basically putting everything on the left side so that they have to think about, um, they have to constantly force themselves to pay attention to that side to sort of reestablish that pathway. Because what neglect patients will do is they will complain that they only got half a dinner um, because they only see half of it on their plate. So it's really remarkable. And as I said, they'll put makeup on one side of their face, they'll shave one side of their face, um, which is really pretty remarkable. Um, we also know that patients can be motivated to detect stimuli as well by moving things over to that um, neglected side. And uh, finally, uh, neglect extends to internal mental imagery and memories. There's a really clever study um, of some patients in Milan, Italy, um, regarding the Piazza del Duomo, which is a very famous piazza in Milan. And so what they did in this particular study, and I apologize for the um, outline being off here, um, but the two uh, Milan neglect patients were asked to imagine standing at one of the end of the piazza and describe what they could see. So as you can see, this is an aerial view of the piazza. Uh, on the right-hand side is the cathedral, on the left-hand side is something else. Um, <laughs> not having ever been to Milan, I couldn't tell you. But they're asked to imagine standing on the cathedral steps and describing what they could see. or at, And then they were asked uh, to imagine they were standing on the other end of the piazza facing the cathedral and asked what they could see. And it turns out, so here's the view of the cathedral, they would always describe the buildings uh, on the right of their view. So if we go back here, so if they're standing facing the cathedral, they'll describe the right and everything on that right-hand side of the of the piazza. Now, if they're asked to move to the cathedral steps and describe their view, they can then describe everything on the other side of the plaza. So what they were able to do then is imagine or s picture the entire uh, piazza, but in their memory and in their internal imagery, they were only attending to what was on the right-hand side. So they were actually ignoring that was on the left and not describing any of that. So it's a really remarkable study demonstrating that this is uh, entirely attentionally based, and it extends to a number of different modalities uh, across um, the attention spectrum. So some other studies of neglect patients have included um, looking at the kinds of neglect that they have. Some have a spatial neglect, so the entire right-hand side. Uh, others have an object-based neglect, so they'll uh, sorry, the left-hand side, um, an object-based neglect where they'll ignore the left side of just objects, um, but not their entire visual spatial area. Uh, we know that patients with right hemisphere damage have a more severe neglect, so there is right side neglect um, based on a left hemisphere stroke, but it's uh, not as common and it's not as severe. Uh, interestingly, priming studies show patients process information in the neglected field to some degree. <clears throat> so if you remember, several lectures ago we talked about repetition priming, semantic priming. So in these studies, uh, they'll present something like this on the neglected side. So they'll have a point of fixation, and this is presented to the left visual field. Uh, and then on the non-neglected side, they'll present uh, another uh, stimulus, and the participant will indicate if it's a fruit or an animal, and they'll be faster at identifying this pear because the apple was presented in the neglected side.
uh, than uh, if you had presented something else in the neglected side. So it shows that you get that kind of um, semantic or repetition priming based on um, these kinds of studies. So that's a quick introduction to agnosia. I want to, or sorry, uh, hemispatial neglect. I want to talk for just a moment about two kinds of what's called simultagnosia. And simultagnosia is characterized uh, uh, by the inability of an individual to perceive more than a single object at a time. And we believe that this is based on attention, so they can only pay attention to a single object at a time. And so if you present uh, this kind of visual scene uh, to a simultagnosia patient, um, they'll be able to describe individual objects, but they can't tell you what's happening in this scene. So they won't be able to process the scene all at once, which is, there's a lot going on here. I don't know what she was taking, but obviously something good, because she's not paying attention to anything happening. Um, but this is the kind of thing you present to patients to see what they can see and what they can't process, can and can't process. And they can process one thing at a time. Oh, this thing's overflowing. The kid's going to fall down. Um, she's drying her dishes, that sort of thing. But they can't process the entire visual scene. Uh, there are two different kinds of simultagnosia, a dorsal simultagnosia and a ventral simultagnosia. And in dorsal simultagnosia, perception and attention is entirely limited, limited to a single object. So they're only able to see one object at a time. And so these patients um, may collide with things in a room because they aren't noticing them. And so they'll walk right into them because they're only noticing one thing at a time. Uh, this is generally due to bilateral lesions, to the junction between the parietal and occipital lobes. <coughs> there is also a ventral simultagnosia, uh, in which patients are able to see several objects at once, but the rep recognition of objects is piecemeal or limited to one at a time. Thus, individuals are capable of navigating through a room without bumping into furniture. Now, um, what's interesting is there is some evidence that dorsal simultagnosia is actually due to an inability to disengage attention from a single object. So once you've focused on an object, you can't disengage and switch your attention to another object. Um, and so there's some question as to what the mechanism between dorsal and ventral simultagnosia is. Uh, but there is some belief that that may be the case, that once you've directed your attention somewhere, you can't disengage and move it somewhere else. Uh, but patients with ventral simultagnosia um, seems to be this kind of loss of the ability to perceive a whole scene. They can see each piece, but they can't um, put it all together. And this is usually due to damage to the left inferior occipital temporal junction. So that's why this is a more ventral simultagnosia, where the parietal occipital junction is more dorsal simultagnosia. Um, this is oftentimes uh, accompanied by uh, other severe symptoms in what's called Balint syndrome, which includes optical ataxia, an inability to even move your eyes, uh, and some other damage. Uh, that's a pretty uh, debilitating um, syndrome because of the um, massive losses of um, optical, uh, optical ataxia. <coughs> Sorry, the loss of eye movements. So what is neglect telling us? What are these patients telling us about attention? Well, certainly that um, certainly visual attention or spatial attention is primarily a right hemisphere function. Uh, there are separate systems for spatial and object-based attention based on the fact that we get hemispatial neglect, we can get object-based neglect, and we can also get object-based attention disorders like simultagnosia. Uh, we do know that unattended information receives at least some processing, particularly in neglect patients, and we can see that in the fact that we get that kind of priming. So this tells us a lot about uh, what's happening with attention. So if we think back to all the different models and whatnot we've talked about attention, uh, we certainly see that things that we're not paying attention to are still processed uh, to some degree, as we've seen in even all the way back into the uh, dichotic listening tasks. So that tells us a lot about what's happening with attention, and we're going to tie this all together with Posner's attentional networks in the next lecture. So. In previous lectures, we've talked uh, a little bit about the what pathway, so we'll t again start to tie this a bit together. Um, the where pathway is known as the dorsal stream. It's characterized as a fast system for processing motion with really limited conscious awareness of what's happening. If you get uh, damage to this um, particular stream, you can get hemispatial neglect, 
um, akinetopsia, which is a loss of the ability to perceive motion, and optic ataxia, which is difficulty with um, ocular or eye movements. Um, all of that is happening there in this dorsal stream or the wear pathway. In the ventral stream, we refer to this as the wet pathway. Uh, it's characterized as a slower system, processing detail with more conscious awareness. Damage here results in agnosia and prosopagnosia, and of course we also looked at the um, ventral uh, simultagnosia. So this is primarily a processing detail. Now we do know that people can process what things are in the wear pathway, particularly if they're processing them based on how they're moving and what we call things like biological motion. Um, but primarily uh, the wear pathway is movement and location, and the what pathway is uh, identity uh, and object recognition. So that gets us uh, to uh, the end of this lecture on uh, the neuropsychology of attention. In our next lecture, we're going to talk about Posner's uh, attentional network and also attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, as well as how drugs affect attention.